Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Engelbard. Today I'll be comparing apples to apples. Well, not literally. Last time I took a look at the iconical Rock Chip RK3328, which, as it turned out, was a Rock 64 1GB version 2. This is sold in a kit on Amazon that includes the board, an AC adapter, micro SD card case, and external LCD display. All for the mind bogglingly low price of $8.99. After showing up at that insanely low price, the cost has ballooned a whole bunch of times, and it currently sits at $19.99 as I record this on October 8th, 2020. If you're interested in picking up a cheap single board computer to play some retro games, it's a great choice as we saw last time. Essentially it runs everything PlayStation and below just fine. So is it worth upgrading if you have a Raspberry Pi 3B already or a 3B Plus? Does it make sense to get this instead of a Raspberry Pi 4? Well, you'll know the answer to those questions and more by the end of this video. Now this is going to be a bit of a quick and dirty comparison video. Grab, run, clean. For each machine, I'm using its official current version of Laka. I'm using the same USB 3.0 drive to house all of my games for this. All systems are being run at stock speeds, so this is the exact type of performance you can expect to get without overclocking or anything. I did use a heatsink and fan on all three systems though. I also used the same controller on all three, in this case, a generic wired Xbox 360 pad. Just to be crystal clear as we begin, if you only want to play old 8 or 16-bit retro games, any of these three single board computers will do just fine. What we want to see here are how some 32-bit and beyond systems compare across these three platforms, so that's what I'm focusing on here. We'll have the Rock 64 on the left, the Raspberry Pi 3B in the middle, and the Raspberry Pi 4B on the right. And we begin with Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it's fine on all three. Full speed and everything I tried. Here's some quick video of Castlevania Aria of Sorrow and V-Rally 3. One thing of note, the Raspberry Pi 3B suffered from significantly worse and very noticeable input lag compared to both the Rock 64 and the Pi 4. Why? I don't know but it was still playable with some minor adjustment. It just made the Pi 3B the worst performer of these three, since it had more lag than the other two. On to the PlayStation. Here's Clonoa. Yeah, it's basically fine on all three of them. There are little moments of teeny tiny issues on the Pi 3B with this, which manifest primarily as occasionally staticky audio. For the most part, it's fine though. Input lag was not as severe on the Pi 3B with PlayStation emulation as it was with Game Boy Advance emulation. The other two platforms were not just fine. Gradius slash Gradius Galaxies was fine on all three systems as you can see here. Capcom vs SNK Pro was also fine on all three for the most part, with some rare audio static on the Pi 3B. Alright, Sega 32X. We begin with Space Harrier. Speed is fine across all three platforms once again. Note that the frame rate of this particular game is variable and inconsistent on real hardware, but the Rock 64, Pi 3B, and 4B all ran this essentially perfectly. However, one thing I have to point out again is that input lag is definitely detectable on the Pi 3B. You'll definitely notice that the character movements feel a little bit heavier because of that. Like with the Game Boy Advance, you can compensate once you get used to it. And uh, same deal here for Virtual Racing Deluxe. This game is also full speed on all of our platforms tested here today, and we experience minor input lag on the Pi 3B, but not any noticeable input lag on the other platforms. No huge differences besides that. Oh look, it's the Atari Jaguar! It's shit on the Rock 64, it's shit on the Raspberry Pi 3B, and it's shit on the Raspberry Pi 4B. Here's Checkered Flag. It runs terrible on all three systems, but it does perform way better on the Pi 4B, just not nearly at playable frame rates. Rayman, likewise, is terrible on the Rock 64 and Pi 3B. It's noticeably faster on the Pi 4 and runs a lot better but it's still not exactly close to full speed, and I would say it is not playable. Alright, 3DO. 3DO is unplayable on a Rock 64, and unplayable on a Pi 3B. 
But hey, look at that. It's actually almost full speed on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's essentially playable here, but doesn't quite reach consistent full speed, which you can tell from the sound. So the Pi 4 sure looks like it's starting to pull away a bit, doesn't it? All right, for the arcade, I'm just gonna look at one game here that's on hardware that is typically a little more demanding than a lot of other arcade games, and that will be Darius Gaiden. On the Rock 64, using MAME 2003 Plus, it's very playable with just minor instances of slowdown here and there. If you use MAME 2010 or Final Burn Neo on the Rock 64, it's much slower and unplayable. On the Pi 3B, even using the less demanding MAME 2003 Plus, Darius Gaiden suffers from much more severe slowdown. It has moments where it runs at full speed, but they're pretty rare. On the Pi 4, it's full speed even using the much more demanding MAME 2010. Nintendo 64. This is an interesting one. You see, on the Rock 64, I had to use Parallel, and I couldn't get any game to run using Moopin. So I'm showing you the best performance I could get out of the Rock 64, even though I had to use a different emulator on it than the other two single board computers here. On the Pi 3, I was able to use both versions of Moopin, which ran noticeably better than Parallel did on the Rock 64. I wish I could have got this working on the Rock 64 for a more fair comparison, I just couldn't get it working. And oddly enough, I couldn't get Parallel to run on the Pi 3B or the Pi 4B. I had to use Moopin on both of those boards. So we can see we're getting pretty close to full speed on the Pi 3. It slows down and it's noticeable, but it's got pretty decent performance here. And again, this will vary greatly by the game, so don't look at Mario Kart and say, hey, this plays every N64 game, because it doesn't. It's not even close. I chose Mario Kart 64 because it's a less demanding game that would give these single board computers a fighting chance at running it at full speed. So on the Pi 4, I was able to run Mario Kart at pretty much full speed here. And again, even on the Pi 4, performance will vary significantly by the game, and you'll find that most N64 games are not full speed on the Pi 4. All right, Sega Dreamcast. Performances, gross on the Rock 64. Disgusting on the Raspberry Pi 3B, and mm, on the Raspberry Pi 4B. Now on a Raspberry Pi 4, you can get much better speed by using ReDream on, say, something like RetroPie, but again, I'm using Laka on all three of these single board computers to keep the comparisons as fair as possible. So yeah, Dreamcast, not really playable with Laka even on a Raspberry Pi 4. Next up, PSP. This was probably the most significant difference between the Rock 64 and the Pi 3B. The Rock 64 was able to run Darius Burst at basically full speed. It only suffered from very minor stutters here and there, running much better than I expected. After seeing that performance on the Rock 64, I figured it would probably run pretty similarly on the Pi 3B, but it actually was noticeably worse than on the Rock 64. The Pi 3B struggles to maintain playable speeds on this game, and it almost never runs at full speed. The Pi 4B handles the game just fine. I didn't notice any stuttering at all on the Pi 4. Now here's a much harder game to run, Wipeout Pure. On the Rock 64, this game is an unplayable mess. On the Pi 3B, it's basically an ugly slideshow that farts at you while you quote unquote play it. On the Pi 4, whoa, what the f is this? Aside from a strange periodic complete stop stutter, this runs at nearly full speed. I was not expecting that. I would still consider it kind of unplayable with all the stopping that it experiences, but without that, performance is great. Other more demanding PSP games suffered from the same issue on the Pi 4, so it's not just something weird with Wipeout Pure. Also, I had restarted the game and the system multiple times to see if it was just a one-off thing, but the stopping happened each time no matter what I did. The performance on these super cheap, low-end SPCs is terrible on some games, so as an end user, you're not gonna run a whole lot of games at full speed on these. You'll get a decent amount on the Pi 4, but not so much on the lower-end systems like the Pi 3B or the Rock 64. On the flip side, if you have even a low-end x86 PC running something like Windows 10 or Linux, you're gonna get pretty much every compatible game to run at full speed using PPSSPP. 
And there you have it, a quick glance at performance on some more of the advanced systems running on a Rock 64, Raspberry Pi 3B, and Raspberry Pi 4B. My conclusion is that, well, you'll get roughly the same experience out of a Rock 64 and a Pi 3B. The Rock 64 just slightly edges out the Pi performance-wise in a few emulators and seems to have less input lag. If you have a Pi 3B already, then the Rock 64 included with this kit is not much of an upgrade and it's not worth it. If you want to have an extra single board computer to mess with, then yeah, go ahead and pick this one up, but it's not a worthy upgrade. So what about the Pi 4 then? Well, that's where the choice gets a little tougher. I have to say, things have improved a lot on the Pi 4 in the last six months or so. It surprised me how well some things run now on Laka versus last year. Tougher arcade games, PSP, 3DO, and more run significantly better on the Pi 4 at stock speeds using the official Laka build. So the real question becomes, is the extra performance of the Pi 4 worth the extra cost? Let's examine that. Right now, at $20, with the iconical Rockchip RK3328, it comes with everything you need except an HDMI cable. And it also just uses regular old standard HDMI cables. You can modify the included case to make cutouts for the HDMI cable and the memory card slot. Let's also throw in a 64 gig USB drive for easy ROM access. Factor in all that and we're at roughly uh, between $31 and $36. For a Pi 4, it's $35 for just a 2 gigabyte model right now, and that's the board only. I checked Amazon and as of today, the cheapest you'll find an AC adapter is about $8. A small memory card is at least another 5. You'll also need a micro HDMI to standard HDMI cable or adapter, so that's about another $6. Want a cheap case for it? That's at least another $6 minimum. And like with the Iconical system, let's toss in a 64 gig USB drive. If we factor in all that stuff, we're looking at roughly $66. The least expensive kit is $62. And keep in mind, that doesn't come with a 64 gig USB drive, so if we add that, we're looking at closer to $68 or $69. So with everything accounted for, the iconical Rockchip RK3328 kit will be roughly $36, while a Raspberry Pi 4B would be roughly $66 to get it with everything you need. And of course, if you don't want the bare minimum stuff for the Pi 4, if you want to get, say, the 4 or 8 gigabyte model, a nice case with good cooling and extra features, you could easily be looking at significantly over $100. But I will say for emulation, 2 gigabytes is all you need on your Pi 4. There's no point in getting a 4 gig or 8 gig model of the Pi 4 if you just want it for emulation. So, if you just want to play the old games for the old systems, you're covered on the Iconical slash Rock 64 setup. If you want to play some more complex arcade games, PSP, a little 3DO, or N64, well, then yeah, you'll probably want to fork over the extra cash for a Pi 4B. The Rock 64 is no slouch, especially when it's so cheap, but performance-wise, it's noticeably behind the Pi 4. And that will just about do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. What do you think? Which setup here would you prefer? Is the Iconical slash Rock 64 kit good enough? Do you demand the additional performance of the Pi 4? Share your opinion in the comments. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later!